Nothing could be further from the truth. Slavery didn't destroy the black family. Do you know that we were still getting married through slavery? Mm -hmm. Jump in the broom? In secret? Mm -hmm. Even under punishment of death? We were married during Reconstruction. We were married during civil rights. When do you begin to see the rise of the single parented black female household? 1970. After they killed Dr. King, the United States government said we must neutralize the black power base. And they determined that the black power base was the black family. It was independent black skilled men and women who financed King, financed Mr. Garvey, financed Mr. Muhammad, financed SNCC and CORE, the Freedom Riders in the sit-in movement. So they said, if we want to crush the black struggle, we got to crush the black family. So guess what they did in 1970? King dies in 68. In 1970, they came into the black communities and de-industrialized our city centers. In 1970, they started shutting down the factories. Remember, up until the 50s and 60s, you didn't need a college degree to get a decent job. Many of us got grandparents who worked in factories their whole life and lived better lives than we're living now with two and three degrees. They could work in their same neighborhood and everybody worked for the factory. Good retirement, pension, benefits, medical. They started shutting down the factories in 1970 and then they went into the high schools and did what? Started deindustrializing the inner city high schools. Up until 1970, you could graduate from almost any school in New York certified as a plumber, certified as an electrician, certified as a carpenter, auto body, brick mason, a welder. They took all those programs out. These are the skills that pays the bills, gentlemen. As long as you have a skill, you can always feed your family. But if all you got is college degrees, you might end up in the unemployment line. Why? Because the, the skills that we learn in college are not necessarily marketable to other black people. I'm a psychologist. Ain't too many black people running around looking for a psychologist to reveal all the skeletons in their closet. Yeah, you so, rather talk to a white Exactly. Person. So they started sending us to college instead of teaching us how to work with our hands. That was the 70s. That was the economic castration of the black male. Now let's go to 1980. The CIA comes in, cocaine import agency. They drop off crack. So now the unemployed black man who has always been a breadwinner, Envy, even in slavery, we were always the breadwinner. Up until 1970, now the crack comes. You got a decision. I can sell this crack and try to put some food on the table, or I can smoke it to deal with the fact that I'm no longer economically relevant to the black woman. And drama. let's be clear. The decade of the 70s was the decade of making the black man economically irrelevant to the black woman. We're the only man in America who is out-earned and out-educated by our mates. No other woman in America out-earns and out-educates their mates. And this is not the black woman's problem. I want to be clear. This was systematically done to make us irrelevant to our families. Then the 1990s come, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton crime bill. Mm -hmm. Three strikes and you out. Mm -hmm. Mandatory minimum wages, the Bill Clinton crime bill. Now all those unemployed black men who got caught smoking crack or selling crack now being sent off to jail. And then they also give us the ADHD so that we could dope the kids up with, with the same medicine that sent the father to jail. Then the year 2000 come, George Bush hits us with the what? faith-based initiative he finds a loophole in federal law that allows you to finance churches so now the mega churches and the medium-sized churches in the black community charlemagne are being financed by the government you think it's a coincidence envy that you don't see no major churches involved in the miseducation movement no major churches involved in the mass incarceration movement black no Lives major Matters. churches involved in police genocide yeah. no major churches involved in poverty where is the black church in 2017 when it comes to black people issues they're missing in action because they're being paid by the government to stay out of the struggle and that's why it's called faith-based initiative your pastor is the new fbi, FBI. agent wow Wait, where are you going to be tonight? <laughs> all right, Shalom. Uh, f first of all, I want to say all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem uh, That's the name of the f that's the name of the uh, the heavenly Father and His Son in the Hebrew and original tongue, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. I want to say uh, double honors to our apostles and elders of GMS who uh, taught us His truth and rule well. And Shalom to the elect out there doing the work sincerely and in truth. Uh, my name is Nazar Khud. This is GMS Precepts. And as you can see in that video I just played, it was by a man of, uh, called, uh, who calls himself, or his name is Dr. Umar Johnson. Now I'm sure a few people that watch this video, or maybe if he's in a thumbnail, I'm, you know, or not, um, you, you're, you're familiar with his work, right? So he's a so-called, uh, black leader. OK, but um, there's a lot of things I disagree with what he speaks about. For, well, first off, he doesn't teach out of the Bible. Um, 
Um, and he doesn't teach our people that they're Israelites, right? But he does hit on a lot of uh, uh, key points and true points, which one of them is the destruction of the black household or so-called black household, or I want to say the Israelite household, because that system can be used or is or was used on all the tribes, okay? That system meaning the, uh, uh, to destroy the family structure. That's how you destroy a, a, a people. You destroy their family structure. You destroy their household. And he went through each decade by decade how, how that was done. Now, the only thing I disagree with him on, not disagree, I just feel like it started earlier, was um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the splitting of the household or the destruction of the household. Sorry, I just had a brain fart real, real quick. These weak bodies. Um the he said after king died in the 70s that's when they, they that's when they started to attack the household but i be, believe I, well, I don't believe it started earlier than the 70s um as far as the household being destroyed it started in the 60s okay um it started in the feminist movement when the so-called white women they brought in the so-called black woman into the their so-called liberty fight or their struggles okay when the black women didn't need to be, they were really suckering into that whole shit, right? And I was all done by the CIA. Uh, <laughs> well, Dr. Umar Johnson, he called it the Cocaine Import Agency, okay? Right? Um, so, so that was a program done by uh, the CIA, right? So it didn't. So, so if anything, it it it, it heightened it uh. The, it heightened or it increased after King died, right? But it, it was still something that was in the early or mid-60s, right? So, anyway, let me get into the scriptures because what he was speaking about was all scripture, was all biblical. That, 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 you know, that whole destruction of the black family or Israelite family, excuse me, is, is, a, is basically it's a curse that was placed upon us, right? So, if anybody's familiar with you know, with the scriptures or the Bible, if you go to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, which the word Deuteronomy is a, means a, translates to the second book of the law, the second book of the Bible. If you go to the Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it goes through all the curses and blessings, right? So if you go to verse 16 on down, verse 1 through 15 goes through the, the blessings or 14. Um, then from 16 on down, it goes through all the curses, right? Now, one of those curses, matter of fact, let me read 16 or 15. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 15, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that I will, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, one of those curses are a destruction of the household. Right, and I'm gonna show you where that verse is. If you scroll down to uh, uh, verse 54, Deuteronomy 20 and 54, it says, "So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother." Right, and you see that uh, on onto this day. Okay, that's why you got the what's called the black on black crime or Israelite on Israelite crime. I remember watching a documentary on the Latin Kings, and it said that they kill more of their own people than any other race than any other gang they kill more of their own people because if you break a so-called law or whatever that they have um they kill you okay um you know and the same thing goes with the crips and the, and the blood and, the, and all those other gangs man they you know ms dirt they kill a lot of their own people if a nigga steps on a nigga's new jordans he wants to that's a that's like a death sentence man in certain areas if you walk around and in it you know with the with the wrong colors on you're gonna die that day all right but let a white person do this those same things that urge of killing that person won't it, it is not going to be there why it's biblical i'm not saying there's no hatred for the other races and and, and that's in right now the lord is creating that hatred or that that uh 
um, that hatred but, but between the races or he's increasing it right now even more. That's 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 even biblical, right? So um before I you know I me mean, focus on this, so it says his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom, okay, and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave, right? So this is the verse I want to focus on toward the wife. So it says he shall be his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave and and that's what is going on that's what dr umar johnson was uh, uh going into okay the destruction of the black household yes it was orchestrated it was created a system it was a system created by esau or edom but it was a curse that was placed upon us by the most high for not obeying or following the law statute commandments Okay, so that's the scripture right here. I'm going to jump down to 56. The, t the tender and delicate woman among you, which, w which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the, her husband and her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. So it says what? Even her eye shall be evil. So it's like a, 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 a contention between, between the household. Okay. Right. Let me bring another scripture out. This is Jeremiah 31 and 22. Right. Because one thing that he was speaking about was out of all the all the other all the other races, the only race that is is outpaced or the only race that their wife or their counterpart makes more money than a man is, is a so-called black race. No other race on earth is is uh what's the word um um no other race on earth their wife or the, it makes more money than the than the man does okay that's a crazy so this is jeremiah 31 and 22 it says how long wilt thou go up O backsliding daughter for the lord hath created a new thing under the sun a woman shall come past a man Okay, a woman shall compass a man. So the black, so-called black woman, they make more money than the, than the black man and then the so-called black man. Okay, now I wasn't going to bring this out, but I could bring this out. This is Amos 7 and 17, because when you break up the household, what happens to the children? Okay, what happens to the children? Once you break up, excuse me, once you break up or destroy the household, the kids are going to get destroyed too. Because they're either going to be raised by the streets or raised by their environment or raised by the state or raised in jail. Okay. All right. So it says this is Amos 7 and 17. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, thy wife shall be in harlot in the city and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword and thy land shall be divided by line. Right. So the points in the beginning, thy wife shall be a harlot in the city. If you go to Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, matter of fact, let me go to it. Deuteronomy 28 and 30. 30. 30, right? Deuteronomy 28 and 30. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. What's that speaking about? Uh, 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 adultery. Another man shall lie with her, man. If you get a... Just, nowadays, you can't even get a virgin. We're supposed as an Israelite man, our women are supposed to be virgins. Okay, but we can't even get one nowadays. And if you do get one, she might not even be a virgin, <laughs> you know, or if you were lucky, you don't want to get one. That's a rarity, man. That's like a needle in a haystack. Okay. But but the point is, our women are or are horse, man, you know. Therefore, thy wife should be hauling in the city and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. And that's what happens when you break down the family structure. When you take the man out of the household. Alright, so that's a real quick video. Uh, Lord willing, you brothers are edified. Um, until next show, Shalom.